Welcome to Superior Profit Weekly Market Roundup 22nd April 2019. I am recording this around 2.30 am Eastern Standard Time. I am Sagar Nandi, Chief Analyst and Trader at Superior Profit based in Singapore. I will not take time to introduce myself. If you are interested to know more about me, the company, or its trading systems and products, you may visit the website www.superiorprofit.co. Before we begin, we go through the standard disclaimer. This demonstration is for educational purposes only. It is designed to share information on Superior Profit's trading system. The information presented here should only be used by people who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Past performance is no guarantee of future return. Superior Profit is not an investment advisor. This session is not for any recommendation of buying or selling stock or any other instrument. Superior Profit will have no liability for any investment decision made by its audience. As usual, in today's topics, we will analyze oil and gold using technical charts. They tend to impact related stocks. When swing trading stocks, we like to align them with the direction of the market. We will study market's direction using NASDAQ and NYSE, market breadth, and technical analysis of market ETFs. In addition to aligning the trades with market's direction, we like to align them with the industry strength. We'll study industry strength using scorecard and heat map. Along the way, we may review some of the recent trade ideas shared in the traders forum. If I don't do that, you may access the traders forum from our homepage. It is open to the public and we look for potential trades for the coming week. That was the last slide of the presentation. Let's move to live system. We begin our commodities analysis with oil. We are looking at the oil ETF USO using weekly backdrop chart template and daily hop on or entry chart template. Together we call this at a glance template because this helps us decide if there is a low risk swing trade entry opportunity at the right edge in only a few seconds. After displaying the bullish headwind signal at the very bottom, oil went up. In the last market roundup, I observed that it was at the weekly memory resistance trend line. Looking at that, if you were holding a long position, you could either book or protect profit. This week, oil moved sideways. It is remaining below the weekly memory resistance line. In the daily chart, oil is in an uptrend. It is near the upper boundary. The daily traffic light candle color is yellow, neutral. It is not overbought as we can see from the stretch band indicator. There is no green dot showing that it is not overbought. It is near the upper boundary level but it is not overbought. And it is inside a squeeze shown by the squeeze dots. US oil is being supported by memory support trend line in the daily chart. Therefore, you may not take any short trade until the memory support is broken. Could you take a long trade? It is inside a squeeze. If it could break out of the squeeze to the upside, you might look for a low risk entry opportunity. Let's look at the squeeze from the volatility chart template.
this is another look at US oil using the volatility daily chart template. Here the candle colors are plotted based on the instrument's volatility. Magenta color indicates that it is having low volatility at the right edge. The squeeze is shown more clearly here by the squeeze indicator. If price can break out of this watermark resistance line, it will also break out of the squeeze and you may look for a low risk entry opportunity in the long side at that time. If you take the breakout entry in that manner, you might put stop just below the recent low. From commodities analysis, we move on to market breadth analysis. We are studying market breadth using NASDAQ composite index and NYSE composite index, both using weekly charts. Because this study is using broad indices and longer term weekly interval, you may use this for longer term investment decisions and also for swing trading but not so much for day trading. Both NASDAQ and NYSE are in an uptrend in the weekly chart. Both are at price extreme high, pendulum high as we call it, and NASDAQ is overbought in the weekly chart. This week, NASDAQ candle color is yellow. It changed from bullish color to neutral color and it ended the week with an indecisive shape doji candle. NYSE declined little bit and displayed a bear release signal. What about the internals? The internals are weak. All the six internals declined. and four of them closed below zero. Overall, it shows that the market is overbought. It is still bullish, moving in an uptrend. However, it is overbought. You may be cautious about taking new long positions, especially in stocks that are fundamentally overvalued or technically overbought. Let's study the market ETFs. This is S&P 500 ETF, SPY. This week, SPY declined little bit. We can see that from the weekly activity bar being in red color. It declined by a very small percentage. The weekly candle color turned yellow neutral and it ended with an indecisive doji shape candle. In the daily chart, price is going in an uptrend. It is being supported by memory support line. You may not look for any short trade until this memory support is broken. Price is at the upper boundary level. It is overbought in the weekly chart. Therefore, you may not take any long trade in SPY at this time. NASDAQ 100 ETF QQQ. In the weekly chart, price went up. We can see that from the activity bar being in green color. Still, the backdrop candle color changed from bullish cyan color to neutral yellow color. It is very close to the watermark resistance line that was created by an earlier bearish headwind signal that bearish headwind could lead to a significant price drop. As I have discussed several times earlier, if a bearish headwind can lead to a significant price drop, when the instrument comes back to the same price level as the bearish headwind, some more selling may be left and it may lead to 
further price drop, at least enough to give us a profitable swing trade. Of course, we'll wait for a proper Q trade setup before taking such a trade. Looking at the bearish headwind in the weekly chart and the watermark resistance level, you may be cautious while taking any long position in QQQ. Another reason for caution is that daily chart displayed a bearish headwind signal on Friday. Friday's candle ended with a bullish shape though the color was neutral. There was no bearish headwind trade setup. However, looking at the bearish headwind signal in the weekly chart and the proximity of the watermark resistance in the weekly chart, you may be cautious about taking long position. Will you take any short position? No, you will not take that right now because QQQ is supported by multiple memory support trend lines. Until QQQ can break below the memory trend line, you may avoid taking any short trade. Dow Jones Industrials Average ETF DIA it went up this week, however the backdrop candle color turned yellow. It is not very far from all-time high. In the daily chart, price is moving in an uptrend. It's supported by memory support line. Price is close to the upper boundary level. It is overbought in the daily chart, also overbought in the weekly chart. To extend it to take any long trend, and it is not yet time to take a short trade because price is supported by memory support trend line. Russell 2000 ETF IWM. This is weakest of the four ETFs that is shown by the relative performance line tilting down. IWM declined this week. It is farthest from all-time high. Weekly is supported by memory support line. Daily is also supported by a memory support line. It was inside a triangle pattern one week ago and it is continuing to be inside a triangle pattern. You may not take either long or short trade until it can break out of the triangle pattern. What do we gather from the market level analysis? The market internal show that it is weak. The broad indices are still in an uptrend. However, one of them, NASDAQ displayed an indecisive shape, doji candle, and NYSE tilted down with a bear release signal. Of the four broad market ETFs, two of them went up. DIA and QQQ and two of them went down, though not much. These are SPY and IWM. All the broad market ETFs are in an uptrend, therefore there is no short opportunity. At the same time, the ETFs are overbought. They weakened little bit from the previous week. You may be cautious about taking new long positions especially in fundamentally overvalued or technically overbought stocks. That is the conclusion you may arrive at from the market level analysis. However, market level is very broad. When you drill down into the sector level, further into industry level, then you can always find low risk, high probability trading opportunities where the industry level force technical force and fundamental force are aligned together. We call those Q360 degree trades. One month sector performance. Here we are analyzing the 11 sectors across three review periods. The red bar represents performance of the current week. Green bar performance of one week ago and the blue bar performance of two weeks before that. Together they represent performance of one month. 
any bar coming to the right of the zero line shows the sector went up and a bar coming to the left of the zero line shows the sector went down. This week we have a mixed picture in terms of sector performance. Five of the sectors went up and six of the sectors went down. Among the sectors that went up, Several of them went up for all the three review periods. All the three bars came to the right of the zero line. These are industrials, information technology and consumer discretionary. These three sectors are up for all the three review periods. While they were going up, you could use Q real-time analysis to identify potential buying opportunities and probably you would have large profit by now. One sector went down for all the three review periods. This is healthcare. You could take profitable short trades in healthcare sector while the sector was going down. If we look at the three worst performing sectors, these are utilities, real estate, and healthcare. All of them are defensive sectors that tends to show a bullish picture of the sector. Therefore, the sector level picture is mixed. The underperforming sectors are defensive sectors, and yet more sectors went down then winter. Another look at the sectors using QH real time sector scorecard and heat map. QH analyzes all the 11 sectors across 12 monthly review periods and then more frequently over 10 days, 5 days, etc. and assigns a scorecard and heat map for all the sectors for all the periods. Cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness. This helps you decide instantly which are strong sectors and which are weak. Looking at the five days column, instantly you can see that industrials, information technology and financials are the strongest sectors. You might look for buying opportunities in them. The weakest sectors of the week are utilities, real estate and healthcare. You might look for shorting opportunities there. Other than the strength and weakness of the sectors, QH also calculates acceleration and deceleration and shows that in the pace column. Cyan represents strength, acceleration, magenta represents deceleration. The three accelerating sectors are consumer discretionary, consumer staples and materials. They have cyan color base score and the decelerating sectors are energy and communication services. That is the information looking at past five days performance. Sometimes looking at the one day performance may help you identify turnarounds. If we look at three worst performing sectors of this week, these are utilities, real estate and healthcare. The weakness is shown in the five days score column. They are in magenta colors. They are the weakest. However, if you look at the pace one day column, these three sectors are the most accelerating sectors. Using that real-time insight on Friday, you could book profit in some of the short trades you had in healthcare, for example, and also start to look for buying opportunities there. We saw healthcare declined for all the three review periods and I mentioned that you could take profitable short opportunities 
in healthcare stocks during that period. On 11th April, I shared my bearish view in LLY, a healthcare stock. Let's look at its charts. This is LLY using the Q weekly daily at a glance template. On this day, 11th April, I shared my bearish view on the stock. At that time, it gave a go with flow trend following short trade setup. The daily was coming down with lower highs and lower lows and then it displayed a magenta color candle. The weekly was already magenta for several weeks. I took a short trade at that time using put options and on Friday, I managed the trade. The trade had significant profit. I booked profit in my put options trade and initiated a vertical put options trade with part of my profit. I managed the trade in a way that I got my investment money back and used part of the profit to continue to hold a bearish position in the stock. Why did I book profit in the simple put options position? I did that looking at the acceleration of the healthcare sector as we studied from the QH sector scorecard and heat map a while ago. This way, studying the real time sector scorecard and heat map allows you to manage your existing positions profitably and also helps you take trades probably ahead of others. You may keep an eye on our traders forum. I will post a detailed analysis of how I entered the LLY short trade on 11th April and how and why I managed the position on last Friday. Best performing industries of this week. We are looking at these 10 industries, 5 days and 10 days scores. In Q technique, we like to take long positions in stocks that are fundamentally strong, that are at a low risk technical buy point, and that are in strong industries. Going by that principle, you would look for buying opportunities in these strong industries and avoid shorting. Technology, hardware, storage and peripherals is one of the strongest industries this week. This is a look at the industries using QH real-time industry scorecard and heat map. As was in the case of sectors, cyan represents strength and magenta represents weakness. Looking at the five days column, we find the strongest industries shown in cyan color. Technology, hardware, storage and peripherals is one of the strongest industries. If we drill down into the industry, we find HPQ is a stock that is having optimal valuation. That is shown by the cyan color score in the valuation column and the latest quarterly earnings growth is also positive for several quarters now. On 12th April in our traders forum, I shared a bullish view on HPQ. I attached the Q360 degrees analysis snapshots at that time. The stock was breaking out of a triangle pattern out of a memory resistance at that time, giving us a low risk breakout trade opportunity in the long direction. You may go through this post to see how you could use Q systems 
to take a long position in HPQ right at the moment it was breaking out of the triangle pattern using Q360 degrees analysis. Was performing industries using Q360 degrees technique you would look for shorting opportunities here and avoid taking long positions. You saw that healthcare as a sector declined for all the three review periods. That weakness is evident from the worst performing industries. Seven of the ten worst performers are in healthcare sector. These are managed healthcare, healthcare equipment, life sciences, tools and services, healthcare facilities, biotech, healthcare technology and pharmaceuticals. All the healthcare industries were weak. However, we saw during sector analysis that healthcare accelerated the most on Friday. Therefore, the best shorting opportunities in healthcare might have already passed. You saw that I booked my profit in LLY position and used part of the profit to continue to hold a bearish position in LLY. As I mentioned, that was done looking at the acceleration of healthcare sector on Friday. It may be too late to look for shorting opportunities in healthcare stocks now. Instead, if you find any of the healthcare stocks to be of optimal valuation and if they are going up from a low price level, giving a low risk Q long trade setup, then you might look for a buying opportunity. Accelerating industries. This might be behind others, but they are gaining momentum fast and using the acceleration in Q edge, you might start to look for buying opportunities. Out of the 10 most accelerating industries, 5 of them are in consumer discretionary sector. These are textiles, department stores, apparel accessories and luxury goods, apparel retail, and footwear. All of them are related to smaller ticket consumer spending. Looking at these similar industries accelerating together, you may drill down into them, look for value stocks, fundamentally value stocks that are about to give or are giving low risk buy opportunities. In Q edge, the accelerating industries are shown by cyan color under base column. Several of the most accelerating industries are in consumer discretionary sector. Apparel retail is one of them. Looking to the right, you can see that the score was in magenta color for many review periods. Under five days, the score is not fully cyan yet. The score is 111, However, the gaining of strength is shown clearly by the base column. It has a cyan color score under base column showing it is accelerating. If we drill down, we see there are several stocks that are optimally valued. The optimally valued stocks are shown by cyan color score under valuation column. We can click the smart filter, this fully charged battery to look at only the value stocks. Further, we can sort by the last quarter's earnings growth. 
by double clicking on that column and now we can find URBN as the stock that has the best valuation and earnings growth combination. It is optimally valued. The valuation is in cyan color and its quarterly earnings growth is best among these stocks. You might now look for a low risk buy point on Q technical charts. This is URBN Urban Outfitters using Q weekly daily at a glance template. In the weekly chart, it displayed a bullish headwind at the very bottom. Then it went up. The backdrop candle color is remaining cyan bullish for four weeks now. In the daily chart, it went up strongly in this period and now it pulled back. On Thursday and Friday, it went up little bit. However, on Friday, the traffic light candle color is still red, bearish. The weekly backdrop color is cyan. Therefore, in the daily chart, if next week price goes up, gives us a cyan color candle, that will signal a possible go with flow trend following long trade setup in URBN. That will also give you a Q360 degree trend where the industry strength, acceleration, the fundamental strength, value stock with a nice earnings growth and the technical strength, a go with flee, long trade setup will all come together. Finally, a list of the most decelerating industries. This might be ahead of others, but now losing momentum. If you are holding any long position, in these industries, you may be careful and also look for shorting opportunities. I will not drill down into these industries. You might drill down into these industries, then look for weak fundamental stocks, either in terms of valuation, that is overvalued stocks, or in terms of earnings growth, deteriorating earnings growth in the last quarters, and then look for a short trade setup on Q charts. Those were our regular market roundup topics. You may go through more examples of Q360 degrees trades from our traders forum. The forum is open to the public. You may access the forum from our home page by clicking on the forum picture. Before I begin, let me summarize. The market is clearly bullish. The broad market indices as well as the ETFs are in an uptrend. However, there is some sign of slowing down. The broad internals are bearish this week and most of the market ETFs are overbought. You may look for buying opportunities. However, Avoid buying into stocks that are fundamentally overvalued or technically overbought. Whatever be the market condition, using Q360 degrees analysis, where you align the forces from industry, fundamental and technical level, you are always able to identify low risk, high probability trades in the long direction as well as in the short direction. If the market is bullish, you may focus primarily on long trades using Q360 degrees analysis. And if the market is bearish, then you may look for Q360 degree short trades. Right now, the market is bullish but slowing down. You may look for long trades and you may also be ready with some possible short trades. That is all that I plan to share in today's session. Thank you for attending. I look forward to seeing you in our next session. Have a great week and trade profitably.